friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here today, my name is Dina and I want to welcome you as well. Thank you all for being here today. In today's video, I am going to be doing something just a little bit different. I am going to bring to you an idea for fall door decor. Now, I love creating door decor. I do it pretty much every season. I think the entrance of your home is the first thing people see. And so I always try to go out of my way to make that very welcoming. And so I'm hoping that this idea will work today. Now I've never done this before. So you are gonna kind of come along with me as I learn how to put this together. But you will see what I'm talking about just as soon as we get started. So let's go ahead and do just just that we'll dive right into today's video. The other day as Ronnie was working out in the garden, he came in asking if I had any need for magnolia clippings and I could not say yes fast enough and let him know that I wanted every single last piece saved. Now I have always liked the idea of creating a beautiful magnolia leaf wreath for our front door but have honestly felt a little intimidated by the process. Well, for the sake of this video and the sake of our front door, I put that intimidation behind me and created my very first magnolia wreath using leaves collected from our own backyard and some simple rub and buff. I also took the time to separate out a few small clusters of leaves. I washed them as well and then bunched them together and let them hang to dry in our garage before I decided to use a few of them as well. All right, friends, I moved over to this side of the counter and you know, I did have two different wreath forms. This one is from the Dollar Tree. I do not have the measurements of it anymore. I've had it for quite a while. So now it would cost you $1.25 to purchase. But that is a great deal. But after talking to Ronnie and kind of going up to the door once again, we chose to go with the 20 inch frame from Hobby Lobby. Now the numbers on this one are 161273 and it is 449 for the form. And that again is at Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can get this at Michael's as well. It is the 20 inch, but that is what we're gonna go with because we just wanted a larger opening in the middle and being I've not done this type before, we just thought this might be the best way to go. So we'll see if that reigns true. So we're gonna start out by going through the leaves and separating them by size so that I can incorporate the larger ones all throughout my wreath. I don't want to start with bunches of them and having the larger ones all on one side and having to go back outside and pick more leaves off the tree and do more of the gold leaf because I feel like I've done that enough already. So that's our next step is just dividing the leaves up by size. We do have some larger, so we'll make a pile there, maybe some mediums, and then the smaller. them all separated I knew I was going to have quite a few more small and medium than the large and that is exactly why I wanted to separate them out so that I could make sure and disperse these all around the frame so what I'll do is I will sit down and kind of get started on putting groupings together 
and then we can start attaching them to the frame. For starters, I did purchase this floral wire. It's 22 gauge and I think it's 150 feet long and it was $3.49. It's located right in the floral section by all the foam and things like that. I purchased this one because it does have its little cutter attached and I was hoping that it would make things easier. I'm simply going to take some Flip it off and then I'm going to start with a larger one and then just kind of stack a few on. I'm not sure if I'm wanting to go with a grouping of three or of five, but definitely odd numbers is what I think I'm going to lean towards. I'm just going to simply bring them together down at the stem and then wrap the wire around. So as you can see, it's just a grouping of five and there's no rhyme or reason. Actually, that one kind of turned around, so. Once you get them on the wreath form, I think you can kind of maneuver the way you want them to be. And then if needs be, I will just add some hot glue to them as well. So that's my first bunch and then we'll go ahead and just create some more. way is to gather up your leaves and I have just been doing five leaves for each grouping and then taking my wire placing it just kind of across and then taking this piece and just wrapping it around tight so that it stays and I was trying to kind of loop it and then twist it just wasn't working as well I am not exactly sure how well these are going to do. I don't know how long this wreath is going to last, but I know I do use magnolia leaves quite often in my decor here at home. And so I'm thinking because they have the rub and buff on them that it's not really going to matter much how much they fade in color or anything like that because the rub and buff is going to be showing through. So that's my hopes and I guess we'll see. Okay, I'm gonna finish putting these together and then I'll come back and we'll work on the form itself. Okay, I've got all the groupings together. I'm bringing in my frame and then I'm just gonna kind of take a look at how I'm going to wanna place these on. I guess we'll just start. To attach each of the leaf clusters to the form, I simply threaded one end of the wire between the outer and the second ring and did the same with the other end, threading it between the inner and the third ring, securing it by twisting those two ends together. I then wrapped the leftover ends of wire around the remaining width of the frame, twisting a couple times once again for extra security. After attaching all the clusters I had put together, I found I did not have near enough made. And I was a little discouraged because I really didn't want to go through the rub and buff anymore, but I was truly loving this look so far. And at this point I knew once it was all full, I could place in the small branch clusters and it would be so pretty. All right, friends, it is a complete different day. Excuse the washer behind me. I am so sorry. I feel like there's always something on in my videos, but this is a very real home and we are always doing something. But I came back today because I did go ahead and collect more leaves. I actually counted out 60 leaves that I collected from each one of our trees and I don't even wanna know how many leaves are on this wreath now. Now I went back out this morning and I collected 40 more. 
because I just feel like there's still a few pockets. I did add in a couple clusters already just to kind of see what more I needed. And then I also have more of these. I did my research after the fact. I went on Pinterest and just kind of looked around to see about how many leaves people were using to make these. And they did it a better way. They just used these clusters. I will say these are a pain to gold leaf. Now I did just gold leaf what you're going to see on the front. I didn't on the back. I think if you kept these in water until the gold leaf was done, then it would be easier. But as your leaves start to harden and dry up, it is harder to apply the gold leaf, especially back in places like this, because they do tend to crack. So even on these leaves, I would say the sooner you can gold leaf them after picking them, the better. When I did pick my second round, I came in, washed them really good, and then just placed them standing up in a bowl so all the water that drained kind of stayed at the bottom so that they would stay a little bit more flexible for me. And so it is quite a bit easier to do then. If you wait until they dry out, it's just a little bit harder. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm not sure. I don't know if I'm gonna go in with these first or go in with these. I'm thinking these because these are smaller and I can just put here and there. So let's get started on that. Okay, I just wanted to show you what I do. Now I brought it outside to hang it on the door and I love it already. Okay, I love it already. But there are some pieces that I need to fill in here and then this here is falling down because I only wired it at the very bottom. So I think what I'm going to try and do is see how I want it. If I want it to come down here, then I'll have to rewire it. But I also like the idea of just slipping it up there because then it gives us more of an organic look and I really like that. So I think I may go with that. Um, I may need to come in and think about hot gluing some areas. I'm not quite sure because I still have those small bunches where I can fill in spaces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But I don't know if you can catch it on camera. I am loving the little pods that I kept on. I actually just thought of something. I have some of those that I've been drying, so I might add them in here and there just for another pop of texture. And then of course I'm gonna hang some ribbon, but so far I just, I love it. I'm so glad that I took the time. It was very time consuming. So if you're going to do this, just be warned. All right, I did come inside and I have hot glued this one pod in place. And then I'm just gonna do a few more. And what I'm doing is I'm simply trying to find a stable area so I did use one of the clusters I used the branch of that to kind of hot glue the side of the pod too so I hope that makes sense I really like the look of it so far so let's go ahead and attach the ribbon to it and see what we can come up with because what I'm thinking right now is I'm going to actually use the command strip. Um, I might take it back down. I'm going to use the command strip to apply the ribbon to that and then just let it drape down and then have some tails. That's my thought right now. So I'm hoping that works. So we'll see. I think I am going to go ahead and take this down. And then maybe, I don't know. Okay, 
Oh, I love the color. Oh, I love the color. Now that it is, yes, I now that it's on the door, that's just so pretty to me. I do not really know what I'm doing, y'all, so just give me a minute. Okay, what do you think? I don't know, should I make these a little longer? I had them a little longer, but then I thought they were too long. I like having one longer than the other. I don't remember the rule. I think I can dovetail this because of the width. So I dovetailed that one in, so I'm not sure if I should dovetail this one like here or if I should go lower. <sighs> I'm thinking up here. I don't think I want it much lower. I don't know. I don't know. But so far, I'm loving it. I think it looks so pretty, and I hope that you like it too. Will I ever make another one? Mm. I think if I did, I would give myself more time, and I would do maybe a little bit at a time, and use the clusters instead of using or making my own groupings of five. Um, okay, I think I'm just gonna go for it. I don't know. I'm gonna go get Jeremiah because he's home and he helps me when I'm not sure what I should do. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Jeremiah helped me and we went with shorter on this side and I'm that's kind of where I was at but I wasn't sure I will take you down and just kind of give you a closer look at it and we'll be done All right, friends, we finally made it through that project. I hope that you enjoyed it. I know I love the outcome. I'm so super happy with it. And I will say this is a few days later that I'm recording this and it has held up very well. It did do a little bit of a drying out in our weather. Our weather is still well over 100 degrees. So I had no doubt that that would happen. So it's shifted just a little bit, but I went out there and just kind of shifted it back and it looks absolutely amazing. So even with drying up a little bit more, it's still looking great. But before I close this out, I wanted to share something really quickly with you that Ronnie shared with me the other day over on Instagram. Now he sent over a reel that really kind of spoke to my heart. And so I thought I would share it with you. The gentleman that originally put up this reel is Julian Mendez. Videos. I hope I am saying his name correctly. I will definitely link his Instagram handle down in the description box if you want to go over and take a look. Now, this is the first time I have ever come in contact with one of his reels, but I did go over and take a look and it looks like this is all he does. He does daily quotes and reflections. And this one was just really too good not to share. And so that is why I wanted to bring it to you. So what he shared was, let me see. Here is how you know someone is strong. Now the quote that he shared was by a German poet, Goethe. I hope again that I'm pronouncing that correctly. But he once wrote, there is nothing so strong as gentleness and nothing so gentle as true strength. And what he meant is that the strongest people are loving, kind, and nurturing. They take care of other people. They make them feel safe and protected. Now, Julian goes on to say, to think that strength is making others feel weak is in itself a weak man's idea of strength. 
Instead, to be strong is to work on oneself each and every day. It is a desire to grow and what Nietzsche called the delight of self-mastery. And a strong person doesn't want to master over another, but is already the master over themselves. There is nothing so gentle as pure strength and nothing as strong as being gentle and kind. Now, I looked at just a few of the top comments when I went over to look at what his Instagram is all about. And one of them at the top had said, true, but why are kind people always put down and attacked? And actually, when Ronnie shared that with me, I kind of thought that same exact thing. It's so hard sometimes to continue to be kind. Um, even to sometimes people around us that we kind of share our lives with, it seems like sometimes kindness doesn't pay. But in the end, it really does. And I just wanted to encourage you to continue to be kind, be gentle, and be strong. Don't ever be afraid to be those things. Don't let people of this world rob you of who you are and who you truly want to be, who you are trying to grow into. I tell my boys all the time, I am 53 years old, but I still have so much to learn. I am nowhere near perfect. There have been many days where I have not let kindness be the thing that shines before me. Um, but I try, I try so hard and sometimes it is hard. It is very hard when someone knocks you down and you feel like you've been nothing but kind to them. But you know what? You keep going on. You keep being strong, you keep being gentle, and you keep being kind. All right, friends, I hope that you truly did enjoy today's video. I cannot tell you enough. My heart just burst open when I read through your comments each and every week. You guys are so incredibly kind to me and I just cannot express how much it means to me. So thank you so much for being so strong. But for now, I want to wish you all a wonderful rest of your week. Remember to be kind, be gentle, and be strong. I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.